Eddie Howe has always been very coy in his press conferences regarding injuries and things like that and who might be available and who might not be available. Uh, but this time around, uh, he has confirmed, as you can see on the headline there, that Miggy will be out for at least another four weeks. So any speculation that uh, we had that he might be available for the weekend has been completely uh, quashed by the manager this morning. Uh, he also spoke about Sven Botman, Isak, uh, and of course, Anthony Gordon. Uh, so let's have a look at what the manager had to say ahead of this huge game. <laughs> Hi there, I'm Paul. Welcome back to another Daily News on the Tune Review YouTube channel. Uh, just before we start, uh, if you do like today's video, don't forget to hit that like button. It really does help the channel. And of course, if you're new and you like what you see, help us towards that 18,000 target by hitting the subscribe button. Completely free to do so. Come and be part of the fantastic community that we have on the Toon Review YouTube channel. Uh, but let's get into it. So as I said, uh, as you can see in the bottom there, Miggy is out for another four weeks. Uh, but we'll come on to that in just uh, in just one second. Uh, he started off by saying um, about the break. Uh, he said the break was good. It's been good for some players. Uh, it gave us an opportunity to rest a couple that were carrying injuries. Fabian Scher is a prime example of someone who played through the pain barrier, uh, so the break came at a great time for him. So we know that Fabian's been struggling with, um, obviously, concussion from the cup final and also, uh, a, apparently, a foot injury. Uh, but he's, uh, as Eddie said there, he's played through the pain barrier, and that's something that we've come to expect from Fabian Scher in recent times, that uh, it doesn't matter what injury he picks up, he goes out, he gives 110% on the pitch for Newcastle United. And um, the way he did play, against Nottingham Forest in the uh, the final game before the break there you wouldn't have known he was injured he took a he took a hammer and actually very early on in the game a tackle from um IU if you can remember it was a very nasty tackle uh, and it did look at one stage as if Fabian would have to come off uh, but he didn't as usual played through the pain barrier uh, which was fantastic to see and again led by example brilliant performance um, now, on Anthony Gordon, there's been a lot made of um, who should start for Newcastle uh, as one of the front three. Um, of course, many people think he might go unchanged uh, from the setup against Nottingham Forest. Of course, uh, ASM came off at half time injured. Elliot Anderson came onto the left hand side and did absolutely brilliant. Um, denied a, a perfectly good goal, of course, by that stupid VAR offside decision, which never in a month of Sunders will I understand why that was disallowed, and I don't think anybody ever will. Um, however, what he said was, I don't know if Anthony Gordon will be available on Sunday. He took part in a very small part of training on Wednesday. So we'll see how he's responded to that today. So again, very coy about Anthony Gordon, not giving anything away. Um, obviously, only training on a small part of Wednesday. You would think that he's nowhere near 100% fit yet. Um, but the, for me, the likelihood is that Anthony Gordon will be on the bench on Sunday. I don't think uh, he'll not be involved at all. I think he'll be on the bench. Uh, we've seen this from Eddie Howe many, many times before when he said he'll see how a player is uh, when they get into training uh, later on in the day. Um, but I have a feeling that he will be on the bench. Uh, but, you know, he's got to be careful with players because he, what he doesn't want to do is, um, you know, have any niggling injuries that are still there when the player's uh, either come on a substitute or start the game because we don't want injuries. Uh, certainly with the games we've got coming up, it's a very, very busy schedule now um, with three games in a week for Newcastle United. Uh, this one at home and, of course, two away games, which are going to be very tough. Um, but we, you know, we need all the players... Uh, as fit as possible so if there's any doubt about Anthony Gordon then fair enough leave him out completely uh, for the other two games during the week uh, but like we say we'll have to wait and see uh, how he uh, responds in training today now on Nick Pope um, interesting one this because he said that Nick felt a problem in his thigh after the Wolves game uh, and didn't train in preparation for the Forest game but completed that game with a bit of discomfort uh, he didn't train in Dubai either but has done this week, so the signs are good. Uh, now, that's interesting because nothing was said about Nick Pope, of course, before the Forest game. Uh, nobody knew he was injured. Nobody thought he was injured. Um, he played very well in the Forest game, of course, made that brilliant save from uh, um, the Forest player in the second half, Brennan Johnson, when he went down to his right, saved with his foot. Uh, a crucial save. Um, now, some people have said that maybe he should have done better for the first goal, a bit of miscommunication between him and Sven Botman. Um, but 
you know, I didn't see it that way. I thought that it was a good performance from Nick Pope. Uh, and you wouldn't have actually thought he was injured. Um, so that's a credit to the goalkeeper, really. Uh, but hopefully now he's done a week's training and he's, he's back to, to full fitness because we really need our best goalkeeper at his very best uh, in the upcoming games. Now, on Joe Linton, um, of course, coming back from a suspension, uh, he'll be chomping at the bit to get back because obviously he's missed two games through the suspension and wants to, to get back into the side. Uh, Eddie says, Joe is a huge presence, not just physically, but I think the other lads know how good of a player he is. So to have him back amongst the squad is a massive boost for us. The other players in his absence have performed very well, so it's great to have competition. Now, you would think the way Eddie's talking about Joe Linton there that he will come back into the side. Um, I don't see any reason why Joe Linton won't play. Now, the, the big question for me is, where does he play? Because we had this discussion on the preview show last night. If you haven't seen that, please go and watch it. Uh, some very interesting thoughts on our team lineup and score, etc. Um, I do believe Joe will come back in. Now, for me, his favourite formation is when he's got Willock and Joe Linton in the same side because they um, counteract it. Oh, well, help each other on the left-hand side, don't they? You know, if Joe Linton goes to the left, Willock will drop back into midfield and vice versa. And I think that's Eddie's favourite uh, position for them both. Uh, it seems to work really well. Now, where that leaves St. Maximan, God only knows. Um, I reckon that he will start Joe Linton and Willock in the same team and Maxi will be on the bench uh, as an impact sub um, because I think he gets more from Joe Linton and Willock on that left-hand side for his own... Uh, tactics and formation and that he likes what he sees from them too rather than what he sees from from Maxi so for me it'll be great to have Joe Linton back and his physicality back in the in the side is is something we have missed uh, I know the players have stepped up in his absence you know the, the certainly the um the Wolves game and uh the the, the Forest game they did step up um sorry the City game not the Wolves game uh they did step up and did really well um but you know we have to have Joe back in the side. The way he's played, the way he, he conducts himself, um, I think that physicality is a necessity for us against Manchester United uh, in the middle of the park. Uh, now, uh, on to Alexander Isak. Uh, he says, we haven't seen him yet, uh, so I'll see him for the first time today, uh, but I'm not aware of any problems from international duty. He's got himself into a really good place and he's getting fitter with every game. His ability has never been in question. Now, to me, this means that Isak is going to continue as our striker. Um, it would be absolute ludicrous and pretty shameful if he was to be left out. Um, Callum Wilson is probably chomping at the bit. We know he's... Um, he's got over a little niggle, Callum Wilson, and he's ready to go again. But the way he sacks playing, um, you just can't leave him out. He's full of confidence. He's gone away with Sweden and done really well. He's come back and he's ready to go again. And, you know, the way he scored that penalty at Forest, uh, the, the pure calmness he showed just to slot it home and win the game for us was, was absolutely brilliant. And his performance overall was brilliant. You know, the first goal he scored, you know, to, to drag that ball from behind him to make sure it went in the net was just superb. And we are seeing now, over the last couple of games, the real rise of Alexander Isak from a, a, a dodgy start with injury, of course. Um, it, it's took a while for him to get into the side. Now he's there. Uh, it just doesn't look like he's, he's going to be going anywhere for me, um, which is brilliant for us Newcastle fans because we really have been crying out since Christmas uh, for somebody who's going to put the ball in the back of the net. And uh, Isak is certainly doing that uh, for us at the moment. Now, on Miggy Almiron, this is the big one for me. Um, he says, I'd love... Uh, him to beat the time scale given but I don't see it currently uh, he's making good progress and he's pain free so I don't think there's any long term issues uh, but it's just the time it takes for the muscle to heal um, I think we're a good four weeks off um, maybe slightly less but he's making good progress now of course there was a few fans who bumped into Miggy at Teethrow Airport last weekend uh, and um, they were saying that Miggy says he's fit. Um, clearly, uh, a little bit of pie in the sky from some of the supporters there who'd got a photo with him and things like that. Um, th there's no way Miggy would have said that if, of course, um, he, which he would have been fully aware of, the time scale for the injury. Uh, it's a big blow because uh, Miggy is very, very crucial to us. 
Um, yeah, he had a little dip in form, but like every player does throughout a season. Um, but he's he's come back and he's 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 looking good again. Uh, I've got scored at Bournemouth, which will have done his confidence the world of good. But we do have options now, which is fantastic for Eddie Howe. You know, Murphy came in, did a very, very good job. Certainly uh, no reason why you would look at Murphy and say, right, you should be dropped because he's done really, really well. Uh, putting balls into the box, which is crucial for us, especially when you've got Isak sniffing around in that area. Um, we've, we've just got so many options now um, for the front three. Um, so even our bench... Uh, will probably look strong against Man United. And how many times have we been able to say throughout the season that the bench actually looks strong? So exciting times, but a, a massive, massive blow um, for, for Miggy Almiron. Uh, another month, by the looks of it, on the sidelines. Uh, and finally, on Sven Botman. Now, of course, we knew that Sven Botman came home early from the camp uh, with the Netherlands. Um, Eddie said he suffered a nasty bout of food poisoning. Uh, I don't think he was alone in the Netherlands camp, so he left early to get himself back up to speed. Uh, he's trained with us since he's returned, so should be fine. Um, yeah, we expected Sven Botman, you know, when we saw early uh, pictures in the week of him training, uh, we fully expected him to be fit and raring to go for Manchester United. Uh, obviously, food poisoning is not very pleasant at all. Um, and, it, it, you know, like Eddie said there, it was reported that more than one player got the food poisoning uh, during the camp. But what, what I like about what Eddie said there, uh, he left the camp early to come home and get back up to speed because I think, uh, you know, Sven knows the massive importance of this game and wants to be part of it. Uh, you know, a lot of these players will be, um, you know, looking for a little bit of uh, revenge. Uh, they won't probably see it that way, you know, in the dressing room. But Eddie will remind them of what happened in the cup final, and and let's uh, you know let's put it to bed, kind of thing. Um, you know, shut these Man United fans up. You know that that's from Newcastle fans' point of view. I don't think Eddie would say that about Man United fans. He might do, but he might not. Um, but he would also turn around uh, and say that you know we need to put the ball in the back of the net. Um, you know, as opposed to the cup final where it just seemed to break down in the final third and we couldn't get the goal. Um, this time around, uh, we have players fully fit and raring to go, uh, especially Isak. I, I mean, you know, Isak came on in the second half of the cup final, of course, played really, really well, but unfortunately, we just couldn't get the goals. I think it's going to be very, very different on Sunday. Um, and I think Man United, there's no way they'll be looking forward to coming to St. James's Park. Without Casemiro, uh, it's a huge blow to them. Um, and I think, you know, the likes of Bruno, Joe Linton, etc., they'll be chomping at the bit to get going against Man United absolutely chomping at the bit because this is huge it's a it's a huge game uh you know when you consider league positions we can leapfrog man united uh, if we beat them on sunday which puts us back into third which is an incredible position to be in uh with the final you know nine ten games of the season um so this week is huge because when we see where we are at the end of this next seven days uh you know Champions League football could be just around the corner. And that's how important these games are. But let's just take one game at a time. Man United Sunday, it's going to be an absolute belt. You can catch the game here live on the Tune Review for a full watch along with Billy. Uh, live play-by-play -play commentary on the game. Uh, so give him your support for that. Um, tonight we've got, if you're watching this on the Friday, of course, we've got TTR Friday. Uh, we'll be talking about the week's uh, football news. And then, of course, the big fat football quiz at the end where you guys can come on and challenge the hosts to win some prizes. So uh, a lot to uh, be excited about this weekend, without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, and we'll keep you all up to date right here on the Tune Review. But thank you very much for watching, guys. Please don't forget to hit that like button. Uh, as I say, it is massively important that we get the likes so we go up the search results uh, within YouTube. And of course, as you can see there, we are so close to 18,000 subscribers. So please, if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. It's free. Come and be a part of the community and hit that notification bell, which will always let you know when we upload or we schedule in a live show, which is most days during the week. Uh, but thank you very much for watching. Massive weekend ahead. How are the lads? Take care. <laughs>